Hello, I'm Joel Grimes, one of Canon Explorer of Light photographers, and I'm going to show you how to create an ultra high res megapixel capture using the Canon 90mm tilt shift lens and the EOS R. So let's ask a question why would I use a tilt shift lens to create a portrait? Well, there's three main reasons. The first, which I think is the most obvious, is that when I take my tilt shift lens and shift it from this top position all the way down to the bottom position, I will get an overall increase in the final megapixel capture. So, with the Canon EOS R, which is a 30 megapixel sensor, when I get done stitching the three images together, I will end up with a 70 megapixel plus capture. So, for demanding clients like I have in the advertising arena, this is good news. And, as a finite photographer, there's nothing better than seeing a huge high-res print hanging on the wall. All right, number two, when you take a 90 millimeter focal length, which is a beautiful portrait lens, then you shift it from its top position to the bottom position. What you're doing is you're increasing your overall angle of view when you put all three of those images together. So I get the compactedness of a 90 millimeter, but the angle of view of around a 38 to 40 millimeter. This gives me the best of both worlds. Number three, ultra shallow depth of field. So, if I take my 90 millimeter tilt shift lens and I set it at its widest aperture, which is 2.8, at a five feet distance from my subject, that gives me about just less than two inches of depth of field. But when I stitch all my images together and I create that 38 millimeter angle of view, I still retain the two inches of depth of field. So there's no lens on the planet at 38 millimeter that will give me a two inch depth of field. The best I could hope for is maybe a 1.4 lens, which give me around a five inches of depth of field. So let's talk about Canon's new EOS R full frame mirrorless camera. When I take a manual EF lens, like the 90 millimeter tilt shift lens, there's two things I can do now that I couldn't do before. The first is face and eye tracking, fully integrated using a manual EF lens. The second is focus assist. There's three little diamonds that when I turn my focus and that those little diamonds come together and turn green, I know I'm perfectly in focus. So the process of using a manual lens is seamless. All right, so now we're gonna go in the studio and you're gonna follow me as I go through the process of creating a portrait using these techniques I've been talking about. All right, before we get in the studio, let me demonstrate how a tilt shift lens works. Absolutely pretty amazing. You have two, two ways I can work this lens. One is the shifting position, which is up and down, uh, or I can go sideways if I spin the lens. I can do the tilting down and up, um, and that's usually for depth of field. Um, we're gonna, not gonna use that for this scenario. So, what I'm gonna do is take three exposures. The first one's gonna be in the all the way up position, shift it all the way to the top. Then I will go and take a second exposure in the middle position, and then I'll take a third exposure at the very bottom. I will take all three of those images, there's enough overlap to where I put it in Photoshop and Photo Merge, make it into one final image. All right, so here we are now going to have a lot of fun. We have our beautiful model, Bryce, and she is wrapped up in some tool. So you can get this at a fabric store, and we've got black, we've got white, and we've got some red. I'm gonna mix that up with a black background, a white background, and a gray background with her in a white dress and a black dress. So as I get her in front of the lens, I'm gonna play around. I don't know what's gonna work. Sometimes I just kind of stumble across something and make it all happen. But we're gonna get an amazing picture because this is what it's all about, the creative process. For my light source, I used a Canon 600 EXRT speed light and a 24 inch modifier. I used a silver reflector to bounce light under the chin to fill in the shadows. The reason why I'm using a white, gray, and black background is I can add a texture later in Photoshop using blending modes.
Okay, so we had some amazing scenarios that we just did, and I can't wait to go and see what this is going to look like in the final. So, thank you, Bryce. We're going to go from here, and we'll put it all together. All right, here we are now at the retouching side of things. This is where a lot of the magic happens. And I've got my CR3 files downloaded. We're gonna go into uh, Digital Photo Professional 4, which is Canon's proprietary software. We're gonna do the basic crunching of getting my tones and the values where I want. Then, from there, we're gonna go over to Photoshop and merge those three images together. So let's get started. All right, I got all three of my images selected here that I came over from DPP. All right, now that we got our base ready to go, we're gonna start applying textures and a few other things like levels and some hue saturations and clean it all up. So I'm just gonna go speed through this and you guys can watch how I do it. Well, there you have the final retouch, and I'm gonna zoom in on this for you at 100%, show you the detail. Now I can't wait to see this in a print. So we're gonna go from here over to the Canon's Pro 4000 printer and make a absolutely stunning, beautiful print. Here we have our final print of Bryce at 44 by 60 inches. So at 200 dpi, this comes right out of Photoshop, near resolution, no interpolation. This is absolutely amazing results. So with the Canon EOS R and the 90 millimeter tilt shift lens, I was able to create a portrait that fulfilled my vision as an artist.